Hello everyone. Thanks for being here with me. I see my title is Sharon's Morning Chat. Well, I'm cutting it pretty close. Uh, today it's almost lunchtime. So um, it's been a busy morning, needless to say. But I am glad to be here with you now and to share a bit of time on this day, this Epiphany Day, the Epiphany of our Lord, the wise men uh, come to visit Jesus and to bring him gifts. So let's just quiet our hearts as we um, think about what today is all about. And as I share with you a bit of devotion time, uh, a devotion which I found from the Billy Graham ministry. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. I, and uh, let's just quiet our hearts. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Be joyful in the Lord, the earth, serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, it is he that has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The reading that, is, uh, that I will share with you today is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, beginning at the 29th verse. The next day he saw Jesus coming towards him and declared, Here is the Lord, of the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was with me before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason that he might be revealed to, to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He is on, he, he's on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I said a little earlier, the devotion that I've chosen for today is taken from the Billy Graham ministry. So I'll, I'll read it and then um, just have you think on it. Each year on January the 6th, the church celebrates Epiphany. Do you know what the ancient word means and how to experience Epiphany every day? There's a story about a Sunday, school, a Sunday church service when the children were called forward for a short message. Everyone in the congregation watched with joy as the little ones tripped down the aisles in their dresses and bows, sweaters and ties, their little feet moving excitedly to reach the front of the sanctuary. The pastor sat down on the floor in front of the pulpit to see from their perspective. When the children arrived and sat down on the red carpet, some leaning against the altar, some sitting next to the pastor, they all looked at children, the children's minister, a kind woman, with a calm voice. This is very reminiscent of when we used to have services and we had our children in the services and how they were so excited to be involved in that service. She said to them, does anyone know how the wise men found the baby Jesus on that night so long ago? And before she could finish her question, a little boy, maybe five years old, jumped up on both feet and yelled, star! It took a few minutes for the laughter to die down from the congregation. Somebody had taught this little boy the story of the wise men who took a long journey to see the baby Jesus, an event celebrated as Epiphany on the Christian calendar. 
and this little guy was excited. He knew how the wise men had found their way. Can't you imagine the excitement in their faces? No, oh, I can. The Bible says the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. The wise men were some of the first people to worship Jesus as Lord. But because it takes some time to travel, and back in Jesus' day there were no GPSs, systems, or online mapping services, much less cars, the Christian calendar places Epiphany on January the 6th, 12 nights after the celebration of Jesus' birth. Journeying perhaps 500 miles or more, the wise men sought after the Christ child, following the prophecies from Hebrew scripture, specifically those from the book of Micah. In the fifth chapter of Micah, scripture says, But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel. God's people were the Jewish people, the people of Israel, but the wise men were not Jewish. They came from the east and were known as Magi, or people educated in the ways of astrology. They were pagan or pre-Christian, but they also knew that the prophets had foretold the birth of the king of the Jews in Bethlehem. When the Magi saw Jesus, they fell down and worshipped him. They had brought precious gifts with them for the child, who they recognized as a king appointed not by the people of, or family name, but by God. They had an empathy. And they also had an epiphany, or a sudden insight into the true nature of something. They realized that they were in the presence of God. So they had an epiphany. Theophany, a theological term, theological term, too many T's, also described the wise men's experience that night, a moment when God manifests himself to the world. The birth of Christ represents the introduction of God's spirit into human form or incarnate. This incarnation of God, the man Jesus Christ, had arrived for the sake of all people, Jews as well as non-Jews or Gentiles. The wise men were Gentiles, but they were on the lookout for God, searching for him in scripture, listening for him in, in the words of the prophets, and watching for signs of his revelation on earth. And though Jesus Christ, they were through Jesus Christ, they were able to become God's people as well. When you look at something that you may have known about for a long time, and suddenly you realize that it is very special, much more meaningful than you ever acknowledged, then at that moment you have had an epiphany. You've uncovered something that was there all along, but was hiding, in a sense, just below the surface. It wasn't so obvious. It took a second look. The Magi realized that Jesus was their king, too, so they went out of their way to yield to him and bring him the praise that he deserved. Recognizing Jesus as king is the ultimate realization that anyone can have. It's a life-changing epiphany. At this time of year, life can seem a little lonely or dreary. The Christmas trees have been taken down, the lights packed away, and wrapping paper has been put in the trash. Children have played with their new toys until they don't seem new anymore. And the new year has come and gone. You already may have broken a, re a resolution. In my case, you have to make one before you can break it. But the joy of Christmas isn't over, yet because we can choose to recognize the mercy of God in the everyday stuff, with open hearts and expectant outlooks, believers can have epiphany moments any day. Try looking at life through the eyes of a child who is so excited about the Christmas story that he can't contain himself, 
or see the events of the day through the eyes of a traveler who has journeyed many miles to find something very small, new, and precious. In fact, Jesus commanded that his followers have this kind of wide-eyed faith. How often have we heard uh, that if we looked at things more like a child, maybe we would truly see what it's all about. Their wide-eyed faith, their wide-eyed hope and excitement is what we need to find in our day. It is a difficult time, but I still pray that we can find joy in each and every day. There has been a... Um, idea that has gone around for many years and it's to have a blessings jar or um, a jar that you sit on your kitchen counter or your table or your coffee table and each day you write out what has blessed you that day and you set it in the jar and then at the end of the year or at sometime throughout the year when you're feeling a little low or a little uh, lonely, you open up that jar and you take a look at some of the blessings that have happened to you on each and every day. Some of them may be very small, some of them may be very large, and, and uh, maybe there's some that you might even like to share with someone to brighten their day. Um, epiphany, what a day that we could have an epiphany. Each one of us has been blessed with many gifts, as I've said before, and when we can recognize them uh, or someone points them out to us, that may be our epiphany. So I pray that each and every one of you, sometime during this year, may have an epiphany. Let us pray. From the rising of the sun to its setting, let us pray to the Lord. That the people of God and all the world may worship in spirit and in truth. Lord, we pray for everyone today throughout our world, and we pray for health and safety across every corner of this earth of yours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer that the church may discover again that unity which is the Father's will. Yes, Lord, we do pray for unity. And we pray for that unity to expand throughout our community and our province and that people will come together in their thoughts, in their words and in their deeds. May we be united and to realize the importance of each other and how we treat each other. That the church may discover again that unity which is the Father's will. Yes, Lord. We pray for, in our, in our church, we pray for Linda, our primate, for David, our metropolitan and diocesan, for Douglas, our priest and rector, for myself as a deacon here in the parish of Kingston, for John, our honorary assistant, and for, the, for Bishop McAllister College and their return to school in the coming week. We pray for the staff and the students there. We pray for our companion Diocese of Hull and for Bishop Matthias and his clergy and the people in the Diocese of Hull. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the nations of the earth may seek after the ways that make for peace. May our leaders come together. May we be strong people that support our leaders in every situation. In the world today, it is not easy to be in that place of leadership. But Lord, we need to give them our support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
that the whole creation groaning in travail may be set free to enjoy the glorious liberty of the children of God. We pray, Lord, for those that are in hospital, those that are in nursing homes and special care homes and are in their own homes. We pray for their health, their safety. We pray for those that are lonely and alone. For those that are dealing with the issues of COVID. Here on the peninsula, we pray for all of those that are recovering and healing. May they feel your love and your support, Lord. We pray for Gary for Emily, for Lynn, for Taylor, Dominic, Holly, Craig, Robert, Emmett, Austin, Matthew, Sherry, Alex, and Barb, and Ivan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That all who with Christ have entered the shadow of death may rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, remember all of those that have passed in the last few weeks, in the last few years, and as we remember anniversaries of those in our family, uh, we ask that you give us hope and that we remember the memories with such joy in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us commend the world to which Christ showed the way to the mercy and protection of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Collect for today. O God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we who know you now by faith may at last behold your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Believing in the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May Christ who sends us to the nations give us the power of his spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sun is coming out. It's nearly noon. Thanks for being with me. And I hope and pray again that uh, you will have an epiphany. Have a great week, and uh, I'll see you next time.